Hi everybody, it's good to be with you again uh, for another turning the page uh, session, <laughs> whether you're listening to it by podcast or watching it on YouTube or somewhere else. Um, just so good to be back with you again. And today I'm going to be talking a bit about um, people's fear of God leaving them. You know, and deep down, deep, deep, deep down in me, I think one of my greatest fears if I strip it all away, is that of abandonment. That sort of I'll be kicked out of the tribe, um, the family, the grouping. And I will be alone. And like a, uh, I suppose like a leper that's cast out of town, I'll be on the outside of the wall. Whilst everybody else is enjoying community on the inside. And I can hear the party going on, but the door is shut and bolted for my entry and dig deep into the longings of your heart and I think you may well find a similar fear you see we were uh, created to enjoy a party going on not the sterility of an isolation ward yet so many live in a fear of God leaving them they have a deep belief that God um, having become so fed up with their sin lack of obedience, trust, failure, that God just throws up the hands to the skies and shouts, I'm done, they're out of here. Maybe there's a threat of being kicked out, was held over to them from a young age. Punishment for not getting it right. Oh, there go the dogs. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, there's been threats, uh, condemnation, rules, black and white, you're in, you're out. Possibly even at a young age, they experienced um, a deep loss, a death, a parent walking away from marriage, a belittling of genuine pain, uh, healthy God-designed attachments broken, torn away. You see, rejection can get its hooks into you, into us at a very, very early age, and really only love can pry it loose. You see, I think we often make God into our own likeness. <laughs> Voltaire wrote that in the beginning God created man in his own image and man has been trying to repay the favour ever since. <laughs> you know, we, we create an image of what God is like from the scraps of our own experiences. Uh, you see we get taught certain theologies about God's, about God's nature. You know, it's head knowledge. We're told God is love, God is this, this, this. But so often what we actually deeply believe, the heart knowing, is actually caught through the experiences of our lives. And we remain in the old belief systems until we have caught or we catch healthier beliefs. And so the question is, what beliefs have you caught that actually need to be thrown back? <laughs> as they are either undersized or something never intended for eating. <sighs> Look, promises and promises and promises to never leave. Look, I could fill this this blog post, this, this podcast, um, with verse upon verse of scripture about God never leaving us. Here's one of them. Um, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be feared or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31.8 But do these verses touch that core fear of the heart? Maybe they do on a very cognitive basis, but what does the heart need to hear? You've seen promises get broken. You've broken them yourself. So now you're not too sure about being reliant on a few words that get uttered. Look, I believe that God uses us, that's you and me, as uh, flawed mirrors of themselves. Uh, Father, Mother, Spirit, Jesus. That's like we reflect something of what God is like. Uh, we discover new facets of what God is like through the expression of themselves through their greatest creation, us. And when someone who knows my pain, shame, guilt, darkness, depression, anxieties, my, my blackness, and yet still chooses to love and welcome me into themselves, then I smell the aroma or the perfume of perfect love. 
I catch something of what God is like. You know, as a pastor, coach, friend, you know, I've had the deep privilege of hearing some of the most terrible things that have happened to people. Actually, once I had a counsellor say to me that God has given me the gift of being able to walk into the very dark places of people's lives and having nothing stick to me. I'm not sure whether I was thrilled with that or not. <laughs> but when I have listened to the darkness of others, I have been kind of an ambassador of Christ. I have represented God's I am with you reputation. And when I've given the invitation to look bad in the face of love, often people have caught a new vision of what God is like. Teresa of Avila uh, wrote this, Christ is nobody but our but yours. I'll rephrase. Christ has no body, physical body, now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, your, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Teresa of Avila. We all know what a reputation is, don't we? Often it's negative. That person has a reputation for not being trustworthy, for doing these bad things of failure. Uh, there's a guy that wrote the Proverbs. He said, a good name or reputation is more desirable than great riches to be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Proverbs 22 verse 1. You see, a good reputation is important in life. Consistency. Uh, reliability, faithfulness, all qualities that build trust and confidence. And God also has a reputation to maintain. Look, in the, in the oldest book of the Bible, Job, we find a man who must have questioned whether God has abandoned him. His life of seeming blessedness had been completely destroyed. Anything of material wealth, health or supposed blessing had been stripped from him. Then his so-called friends and family told him to abandon God, to walk away. And they misrepresented the nature of what God was like. They were smearing God's reputation. <clears throat> At the end of Job's story, these friends are confronted by God about their words, their folly. And God comes to them and says, um, after the Lord has spoken these, these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, for you have not spoken what is, of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore take seven bulls and seven rams, that's pretty costly stuff, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept his prayer not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has done. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shunite and Zophar the Her and Nahmanite went and did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Look, God's reputation of faithful commitment to his creation, the apple of his eye, that's you, had been smeared and tarnished. Look, there is a reputation to be upheld in the heavenlies of our God being faithful to creation. Have you caught it yet? God rejecting you would be like the ocean rejecting the fish. <laughs> a vomiting out on the shoreline of a fish. Something that was designed for swimming and breathing in water. You wouldn't last a minute. You were made to be living in full contact presence of a loving threefold dancing family it's just we aren't always aware of it look spiritual formation is an evolving awareness we start with some assumptions about what god is like and we evolve exposure to the new replaces the old we ask for more awareness of what god is like to seep into our souls and like the friends of job we often misrepresent what god is like so we ask for forgiveness, and God makes it right, because God is infinite love and forgiveness. God has a reputation to maintain. 
Look, as you are, as you pray, ask God that you may catch more of God's delighting presence around you. That's the old beliefs that uh, are holding you in fear will be replaced with new beliefs of eternal inclusiveness to God's heart. Here's some quotes. Faith is not the clinging to a shrine, but an endless pilgrimage of the heart. Abraham Joshua Heschel. The furious love of God knows no shadow of alteration or change. It is reliable and always tender. Brian Manning. We cannot attain the presence of God. We're already totally in the presence of God. What's absent is awareness. Richard Raw. And David Dow says, like faded paintings on the wall that one never sees because they've always been there, so are assumptions that govern our lives. That's so true. What are the assumptions that have governed your life about God and his desire for connection with you? Questions. Number one, caught or taught? Some of our some of your deepest beliefs, were they caught or taught? Number two, what grows awareness of God's forever presence in your life? Number three, what happened in you when you, you when I read those words, God rejecting you would be like an ocean rejecting a fish? What happened in you when you thought when you heard that? Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Um, send me an email. Really enjoy getting emails from my readers and listeners and viewers. It's Barry at turningthepage.co.nz. And if you want to support what we're doing here, um, Patreon supporters, it's a dollar, a US dollar a month. That's pretty cheap, eh? But every little bit helps, it really does. And I just want to thank you if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, thanks so much for being supportive for me and helping to do what we're doing here. So valuable, so vital, and uh, you're part of it. And if you want to become part of it, yep, come in to turningthepage.co.nz forward slash support. Hey, we'll see you next week. Thanks, bye.